Hello learners, welcome to our environmental science course at senior secondary level. In the previous program, we discussed lesson number 1 titled Origin of Earth and Evolution of Environment. I am Milam Gupta, course coordinator of this course. Welcome you in this program. It is well established fact that there is a relationship between the environment and the human society. The environment has played a great role in shaping the human societies, but we human beings to have affected the environment. Interactions between the human society and the environment are constantly changing. Primitive humans lived in forests near water bodies and interacted with the environment as hunters and gatherers. I would like to add that the human beings scientific name homo sapiens sapiens evolved more than 2 million years ago. They evolved with a large brain that enabled them to think and use their, their judgment. Humans walked erect on two legs which made their hands free to negotiate manual functions. Dear learners, since environment is important in shaping human societies, let me discuss in detail about environment and society which is lesson number 2 of environmental science course. Objective of this course are to understand the natural resources obtained from the environment, trace the evolution of homo sapiens sapiens, discuss about the primitive humans as hunters and gatherers, describe the tools used by primitive humans and explain how the nomadic humans started living a settled life. Let me begin with the primitive humans. Do you think environment played in any role in shaping the life of primitive humans? Well, yes, it did. Primitive humans interacted with environment for survival as humans became more and more cultured they devised means of using environmental resources for making life comfortable and protecting themselves from various environmental stresses that is in danger. What are these environmental resources? These natural resources can be biotic or abiotic. Dear learners, just look around and count for yourself the items of use around you. You list the rivers, trees, flowers, sunlight, houses, books, table, chair, etc. The list is long, isn't it? Our environment has resources which can be classified into two categories, the non-living or abiotic and the living or biotic. Abiotic resources are from the physical part of nature as you might see in mountains, plains, rivers, seas in physical map, energy, natural gas and petroleum, metals or minerals. Biotic resources are from the biological part of nature includes plants, animals and microorganisms. You can see in the image that natural abiotic resources are land, water, energy, natural gas, petroleum and petroleum products, metal ores. Let us understand the role of each of these abiotic natural resources in shaping the human society. Let me begin with land as a natural resource. You must have studied a physical map. What all is included in a physical map? Mountains, rocks, deserts, plains, grasslands, forests and swamps. We humans not only make our homes in these lands areas but also prepare fields for cultivation and grow crops according to the prevailing climate. Sheds for cattle and other shelters are also constructed and roads carved out for travel and transportation. Land is also utilized for flyovers, subways and of course for erecting factories Industrialization and urbanization are also human projects which diminish natural land resources. What do we infer from this? That our needs are much more than the available land resources. Now let us talk about water as a natural resource. Water is another important natural resource. We all know that life cannot exist without water. Our country has plenty of rivers and is surrounded by sea from three sides but we still face the scarcity of what potable water. This is because what we extensively use is fresh water from natural water bodies which is filtered and sent through pipes and tapes to our urban homes. We only catch fish from sea water and travel on ship, ships on it but cannot use it for our everyday activities. The natural water bodies include oceans, 
seas and surface water bodies such as rivers, lakes, waterfalls and ponds. Almost 80% of the earth's fresh water remains frozen at higher latitude and on mountain tops. Only 20% is available in liquid form. Do you know what is the primary source of water for us? Answer is the primary source of water on land is the rainfall. The 20% of the available fresh water on land is used for various purposes. Let us list the various uses of water. Water is required for irrigation of agriculture crops, industries, building construction, culture of fish, prawn, aquatic plants that is aquaculture, drinking, bathing, cleaning, washing, gardening, pottery, making etc. Water though is a naturally replenishable resource, but overuse and wastage of water is leading to its scarcity. Now let me discuss with you the next important natural resource important in shaping the human society that is energy. We all know that the primitive source of energy is solar radiation. Primitive humans used firewood and cow dung and other animal waste for heating and cooking. Oil extracted from seeds and fish was used by them to light caves and shelters. Another major source of energy is fossil fuel such as coal. Coal as you know has been formed from Vegetation which grew millions of years ago fell and got trapped in sediments under immense pressure and intense heat for years trees and vegetation buried in sediments got transformed into coal. Dear learners, we all know coal is a very important natural resource. How is it important to us? Now we come to the uses of coal. Coal is used as a fuel for cooking, for running locomotives, furnaces, important in, in, in industries for generating electricity, coal is also used for extraction of metals and minerals and in thermal power generation. Today petroleum natural gas are lifeline for humans. Petroleum and natural gas are fossil fuels buried under earth. Do you know how many years it took for these to form and what formed them? Petroleum probably originated from marine animals that lived during past geological periods just as coal was formed from vegetation. Millions of years ago, animals and plants lived during that period got buried under their death under layers and layers of soil and the pressure converted them into fossil fuels. This did not happen in a year or two. It took thousands of years for their formation. Since it took years to form, these are considered as non-renewable energy sources. Our human society is so much dependent on petroleum and its products. So let us list the uses of petroleum products. They are used for running automobiles, steamers and aeroplanes. I hope you know that petrol and diesel are refined petroleum products. Petroleum also used for making plastics and fertilizers. You might have heard about CNG that is compressed natural gas which is now being used to run automobiles and considered to be a relatively clean fuel. Natural gas and diesel are used for electricity generation too. LPG comes in cylinders or through pipes and is used as fuel for cooking. I would like to mention here that energy is also harnessed from sun, wind, animal excreta, sea and radioactive minerals. Now let me talk about metals, ores and minerals. Metal ores are chemical compounds of metal. These ores are found as deposits in earth. Earth has its storehouse, many minerals and metals. Humans have dug up mines and removed massive amount of aluminum, iron, copper, lead, zinc, mercury etc. from their natural deposits. Why? Humans make utensils, vehicles, aeroplanes and spacecraft using aluminium, iron and its alloys are used for making armament, railway lines, bogies and engines. Copper is used for industrial containers, electric wires and is also used in the telecom industry. We also use copper and zinc for making brass items and of course do not forget jewelry made of gold, silver and platinum. Natural resources such as land, water, energy, minerals have all been utilized by humans since long. Let us know now talk about the biotic resources of the environment. Biotic means living and so these resources are 
plants, animals and microbes. I said microbes, what are they and of what use are they to human beings? Microorganisms such as bacteria, protists and fungi which are so minute that they can be seen only under the microscope. Some of them cause disease but some also help to ferment food, stuff such as pizza bases, dough, bread or bhaturas or drinks distilled in breweries. Microbes also clean the environment by degrading waste and dead animals and plants. Plants of course give us oxygen for breathing and food in the form of vegetables and fruits. What about our staple food, rice and dal? Rice and wheat are seed of plants, they are grains but we cultivate and so are pulses and spices. Plants also provide fibers like cotton and jute for us to make bags and clothes. Rubber, resin, wood are all plant products used by us for making various articles used in daily life. Many plants provide medicines also. Do you think plants are more useful to us than animals? Well, that we shall have to debate but animals also help humans in many ways. Cattle gives us milk and meat. Poultry gives meat and eggs, fish, prawns, crabs are also eaten, rot animals like mules, oxen, camel, horse and elephants are used to transport material from one place to another, some beetles give medicines, silk moth gives silk and sheep and give wool. Now you must be aware that how we are dependent on both the biotic and abiotic natural resources. On one hand, natural resources are fast depleting because of over exploitation by humans. On the other hand, earth is becoming a big dumping ground for waste generated by the activities of the fast growing human population. This is becoming a cause of concern as it is resulting in the deterioration of human, animal and plant life. So dear learners, it is important that by overuse of natural resources, we do not upset the balance in nature. Let us care for our environment. Learners, now the time to talk about the relationship between primitive humans, human society and environment. How did the primitive human discover agriculture and when did they begin leading a settled life? Modern humans evolved about 2 million years ago from ape-like ancestors. The two major trends in human evolution have been enlarged brain and bipedal gait or movement. These two evolutionary trends gave humans many advantages over other animals. Large brain helped to think, decide, communicate and hands became free to use for tool making and multifarious tasks. Now we come to the story of human evolution. When human evolution began, forest had dwindled because of glaciation. Much of the land surface was however still covered by forest. The common ancestor of ape and humans had to come down from trees where they lived. They walked on all four limbs on the ground. Recent molecular studies have revealed that from common ancestors, evolution of apps and that of humans diverse about 6 million years ago. Do you know that Homo sapiens is the scientific name of humans? It means the wise humo. Homo nidi is the family to which humans belong. I am sure you must be curious to know about our ancestry. The first ever known human was Australopithecus. They were also known as ape men. They were naked, walked upright and used tools made up of bones and pebbles. Australopithecines gave rise to Homo habilis probably around 2.5 million years ago. These human ancestors had ape-like or long arms but larger brain size than the Australopithecus. Their brain size was intermediate between Australopithecus and modern humans. Also they had heavy ridge above eyes like the apes. Homo erectus made torn axis, hunted for animals and discovered fire. The next stage Homo erectus is supposed to have existed between 1.5 million years to 200,000 years ago. Their fossils have been found in China, Java and Germany. This suggests that they evolved in Africa and then spread to Asia and Europe. Next to evolve from Homo erectus were the Neanderthal men, but they belong to the same species as do the modern humans, Homo sapiens. Remains of Neanderthals have been 
found in Europe, Asia and Africa. They fashioned a large variety of well-made tools and were successful hunters. Soon Neanderthal man became extinct, but another line of humans, the Homo sapiens sapiens evolved and they are considered to be direct ancestors of the modern humans. Having studied about our evolution, let us now see how palm, primitive hunters and gatherers, human discovered fire. Along with human evolution, its skills also improved progressively in tool making. Primitive humans, the hunters and gatherers moved from place to place as foragers. They led to nomadic life as nomads. They roamed large and distant areas. They had no permanent abode. They lived near water bodies such as river beds and lakes located on the edges of forest where plants and animals were abundant. They also lived in caves. They lived in groups of 20 to 30. They roamed in the forest in search of food during the day and returned to the caves at sunset to save themselves from the attack of wild animals. As they moved along, they left behind their stones and bone implements. Their main occupation of, in life was to procure food. Their diet consists of seeds, roots and fruits, fruits of plants and small animals which they killed, the tools they made from pebbles and stones. Now we come to the making of tools. Making tools was a major activity for primitive humans. Tools for hunting, tools for protecting from wild animals, tools for cultivation. There was a gradual improvement in the tools according to the need. Thus, older cultural Paleolithic is ushered in New Stone Age or Neolithic Age. In between, the two is the Mesolithic Age or Middle Stone Age. Paleolithic humans or Old Stone Age humans made simple shapes so stone tools, example hand axes and sticks that were 100,000 years old. Mesolithic humans used flint tools to make arrow head and spears. Rocks were used for making tools. They used quartz, quartzite and other volcanic rocks for making various types of tools. Neolithic humans used much more advanced tools. They used antler, bone, wooden hammer and hammer stone to chip off uniform flex from the rocks to make bows and arrows, harpoons, knives, fish hooks, needles, etc. Human accidentally discovered fire while making tools. This is all about how humans evolved and how they interact with the environment. Now the time to sum up the whole content in terms of what you have learned so far. The earth bears several natural resources of which the non-living or abiotic resources are land water, air, fossil fuels and minerals and the living or biotic resources are plants, animals and microorganisms. Humans apart from food require two major types of resources namely materials and energy for comfort and economic development. Ever since humans appeared on earth they have been drawing their food, clothing and other substances from nature. Humans have evolved more than 2 million years ago when they diverged from apes from with whom they shared a common ancestor. The earliest bipedal humans were the Australopithecus who evolved in Africa. They were ape-like but had larger brains. The next stage in human evolution was Homo erectus with larger brain and erect posture. Their fossils have been found in Java and China. Homo sapiens, Neanderthal man arose from Homo erectus. Soon they became extinct but another line of humans, the Homo sapiens sapiens evolved and they are considered to be the direct ancestry of the modern humans. Primitive humans lived in forest and were hunters and gatherers. They moved from place to place in search of food and led a nomadic life. Along with human evolution, skills also improved progressively in tool making. Humans made simple tools with the stones starting from crude pebble tools as time passed they made better and sharper tools in the Leolithic or new stone age the tools were polished and ground. Dear learners this is all about the part one of the lesson two environment and human society we will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.